Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm going to be showing you a book haul of books that I bought when I went up to London to meet Katie from Kit Kats Can Read and Sam from Colty and Crumbs. We did a meet up, um, we've done these a few times and it was such good fun as usual and we tried and went to some different places this time. So I did vlog some of the day so what I'm going to do is intersperse the vlogs with what I bought in those particular shops so let's get on with the vlog. Hi there booktube! It's me and I'm just walking down the road in London to meet with Katie from Kit Kats Can Read and Sam from Colty and Crumbs. We are heading off book shopping in London today. I'm very excited. Um, you all said you liked this vloggy style so I'm doing it for you today but I'm very very self-conscious of people watching me so I apologise if there's not too much footage of this. Um, Sam's coming to Euston Station so I'm just walking down from King's Cross to find her and then we're going to head off to secondhand bookshop Scoob hopefully which is um, a really great secondhand bookshop I love it so hopefully I'll be able to get some footage of that when I'm there so I shall catch you all in a bit. I'm into Scoob and we've been upstairs looking around and me and Katie um, heard about something called the basement and so we have asked to see the basement and as you can see me and Katie are in the basement this is just one of many rows <laughs> and we've been left down here on our own and uh, we're a bit worried it's the start of a really bad horror film but um we're finding loads of books so that's all right i think we've both got about 10 books now to buy and um they're really good prices and there's loads and loads of proofs we're just oh it's wonderful but look look down the aisles Whee! there's the miniaturist katie found the miniaturist oh no, oh, no. no this is, this isn't the miniaturist. that's a different book but Katie did find the miniature rest she's going to buy and I've had loads of books so I'll show you them all a bit later. So when me and Katie uh, were in Scoob, obviously um, you saw us in the massive basement, it was very exciting, uh, but we did pick up an awful lot of books. It's really, really brilliant in Scoob. There was all sorts of books, there was arcs, there was um, copies of things I hadn't seen and they some of them looked brand new so it was really exciting and they were all over half price um, so I'm going to unbag my scoob bag which is where I bought most of my books so the first book I found which looks brand new to me was The Twelve Tribes of Hattie. This book is about a woman that moves from the American South to Philadelphia. It's about her life journey. Um, she's got a no good husband. She's got nine children that she's bringing up on the poverty line. And it's just about what happens and her life. And it's meant to be really good. So I'm really interested to read this. And this is by Ayana Mathis. The next book I bought I don't think has been out for very long at all and I heard about it on a few channels recently and I'm just so so pleased I managed to, I wasn't expecting to find it at all and that is Tiger Man by Nick Harkaway. This I think is about a sort of ex-military guy that moves to live on an island in his retirement. He makes friends with a sort of street urchin, it's about drug cartels, it's about him having to become a hero for this young boy and it just sounds like a, an excellent book and I've heard rave reviews about this so I'm really excited to try it. Next up is a book I have to admit that I literally went on the fact that I'd seen seen the name and seen it somewhere and, and then I just thought well that sounds good. Um, there's a little snippet on the back and there's a few good blurbs and but it doesn't tell you an awful lot about it and that is The Well by Catherine Cantor. This is a proof copy I think and um, it's been blurbed by Jessie Burton, who's the author of The Miniaturist, and um, on the front she says, I loved this book. All you get on the back is, one summer was all it took before our dreams started to curl at the edges and stain like picked primroses. One night is enough to swallow a lifetime of lives. Sometimes the very thing you wish for is the worst thing that can happen. And I don't think... Oh, look. Ooh, someone's left in the... Um, the publisher's press release. So let's find out a bit more about this book together. When Ruth Ardling, Ardling, 
When Ruth Ardingly and her family first drive up from London in their gaming grime encrusted car and the view the well, they're enchanted by a jewel of a place, a farm that appears to offer everything the family is searching for, an opportunity for Ruth, an escape for Mark, a home for their grandson Lucian. But the well's unique glory comes at a terrible price and quickly Ruth's paradise becomes a prison, Mark's dream a recurring nightmare and Lucian's playground a grave. With the pace of a thriller and heart of literary smash hit, The Well is a dark and devastating tale of obsession, motherhood and the complexity of female relationships wrapped inside a gripping whodunit. Ooh, that sounds really good. Well, I'm really excited about that. Um, so I'm pleased I found that in there. That was a bit of a bonus. So now I know a little bit more about the book. Next up is another um, uncorrected proof, and that is Breathe by Sha Sarah Crosser. Um, I've heard, I don't think there's a picture of the actual cover that you can see here. Um, this came out in 2012, so this is a, a proof that's obviously been passed around quite a bit, but there are, does seem to be really cool chapters. Um, and this is about people, I think, living inside sort of pods and um rebel groups and fighting for survive in sort of a apocalyptic universe and this is um, a ya book next is a book that i've wanted to pick up for ages and that is the golem and the genie by helen wecker and this is a book about a golem and a genie it's set in 1899 it's about a golem whose master dies um, while they're on a ship over to america it's about a genie who's trapped I believe in um, in Lower Manhattan and I think it's about them meeting I've heard great things I've wanted to read this for ages and it was there and it was in such good condition so I picked it up next up is another book that's already out but this is a proof it was out in November 2014 and that is The Walled City by Ryan Groudin and I'll read you just a little paragraph on the back because this looks brilliant. There are three rules of survival in the walled city. Run fast, trust no one, always carry your knife. Right now, my life depends completely on the first. Run, run, run. Sounds brilliant. And I have heard great things about this. It's a fantasy uh, novel and I'm really intrigued to read this. And I have promised that once I have read it, I will send it to Katie at Kit Kats Can Read because there was only one and I know that she wanted to read it too. So I shall be passing this on to her. Next, um, I may have mentioned in a previous haul, I am starting to try and collect Kate Atkinson's Jackson Brody detective books as I find them so that I can read them. And I found Case Histories, which I think might be the first in the Jackson Brody series um, in there. And it was in relatively good condition. And I thought, right, while it's there, I shall pick it up. Next up is a book that both me and Katie picked up, and that is The Hit by Melvin Burgess. I love this cover. It's so... Um, right <laughs> this is a YA book I believe it's about this drug that's going around um, that kills you um, but it is like the ultimate high for a week but then you die um, and I think it's about a, a boy that thinks he has nothing to live for and he takes it and then maybe he falls in love and realizes that he doesn't want to die um, so yeah I've I've heard this around a little bit and I thought it sounded like an interesting read so I'm going to give this one a go. Next up is a book that was recommended on the Book Riot channel as books to sort of read, read on the beach and that is Seating Arrangements by Maggie Shipstead. I think there were four that they talked about and this one particularly grabbed my attention. I think it's, um, well it's an adult fiction, it's set um, in Long Island? Oh, it's set on a New England island. There's a lot of sort of waspy um, characters. It's about a family. They go to this particular beach house every year and they've gone this time to celebrate their daughter's engagement and wedding. And it's just about the wedding and um, I think it's going to be quite an interesting look into this family's life. And then finally for my scoob part of the haul is Take Back the Skies by Lucy Saxon. This book I think came out um, in June 2014. I don't know anything about this but Katie said it was really good and that the second has already come out and so I thought right I'll pick it up on that. So um, I haven't, I don't think I've even read the back. It says uh, perfect for fans of fantasy adventure. 
uh, from Eragon to Mortal Instruments, huge world building, great characters and a page turning plot. I think it's about um, a daughter of a senior senator on an island and she doesn't want to get married off for political gain and she doesn't want to get married off at all and so she stows upon a starship and it's about her adventure and at the moment I am all about space. I am loving anything to do with space as you will see later on in this haul. So I'm really interested to see this and purple is my favourite colour so this book was definitely attractive for me. So that is all the books from my scoop bag. So it's time to see the next part of my life. Right, so we've now met up with Sam from Cold Tea and Crumbs <laughs> and we're in foils. So I'm going to give you a little look around. Isn't it pretty? So we're just in the young adult fiction section. As you can see, Katie is browsing the books. <laughs> this is Katie's yeah. books down here. Yeah, again, look, this is what she bought in Scoob. We went a bit mental, and Katie is, oh, that looks, I've wanted to read that too. Forbidden by yeah, Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma, that is on her list. So we're just having a little look round and then we're going to Forbidden Planet to look at the graphic novels and the big sci-fi fantasy section. So I will let you know how we get on with a little book haul, no doubt, soon. Bye for now. <laughs> Don't know. Just <laughs> how many books do you have now, Katie? So that was us in foils. As you could see, um, Katie bought an awful lot of books. I just bought one book in foils. I was very restrained because I knew I was going to want to look around Forbidden Planet's sci-fi and fantasy section. It is massive and really well stocked and very exciting. And I knew I was going to have another splurge in there. So I restrained myself in foils. I bought just one book. And also me and Sam did a swap of a lot of books we were both getting rid of. And so lucky, she, I was very lucky and she gave me three books. So I will show you both the book I bought and the book that, uh, books that I got from Sam. So in my foils bag, the book that I bought was entirely on seeing it on Sam from Novels and Nonsense channel and I think she's now read it so I'm excited to find out what she thought of it. I'm going to have to watch her next uh, wrap up or review but I love Anne of Green Gables and I loved these covers and it's Emily of New Moon by L.M. Montgomery and I think these covers are absolutely beautiful. I think this is a quartet. I think there's four books out in this series and if it's anything like Anne of Green Gables I'm going to be in love with it so I had to buy this one. And then now on to the three books that Sam bought for me that she was getting rid of. One is Midnight Crossroad by Charlene Harris. I think I may have shown this in a library haul recently, but I knew I wasn't going to read it very quickly. I've got so many books at the moment. Sam was getting rid of it and I thought, right, I can take that library book back for someone else to take out and I'll have a copy that doesn't matter when I get to it, but I will get to it. And it's the first uh, book in a new series by Charlene Harris and it sounds really intriguing, very paranormal. I love Suki Stackhouse, so this is a great one to have. So thank you for that, Sam. And then very kindly, Sam passed on two um, art copies that she she'd received um, some unsolicited arcs and they were um, right up my street for what I'm fancying at the moment and so very kindly she gave them to me and they are The Art of Baking Blind by Sarah Vaughan. This is an adult literary chiclity type book I think and I don't say that chiclet in a derisive way I just mean it as a way of explaining what this is about. It's a general sort of romantic um, fiction book this makes me think uh, one of my favourite shows to watch in the year is um, The Great British Bake Off. It's like a baking competition. It goes on for a number of weeks and people compete in different rounds. Well, they all compete together. I think there's normally 12 at the beginning. One gets voted off or knocked off by the judges um, every week. We've got Mary Berry and Paul something. I can't remember. He's a bread baker. But Mary Berry you should have all heard of. And, um, you know, one week might be pastries and they have to do three different types of competition. And this sounds like this is exactly what this is about. It's like a baking competition. And, oh, A, I love me some baking. B, I love me the Great British Bake Off. And this just sounds brilliant. And then the final book she gave me, I hadn't heard of, and it's uh, The Matchmaker by Ellen Hildebrand. I had heard of Ellen Hildebrand, I think. 
Um, but let me read you the back on this one. A touching new novel from Ellen Hildebrand in which a dying woman sets out to find love for those closest to her before it's too late. Dabney Beach has had a long gift, long, lifelong gift of matchmaking, 52 couples still together to her credit. But when Dabney discovers she's dying of pancreatic cancer at the age of 48, she sets out to find matches for a few people very close to home. Her husband, her lover and her daughter Agnes, who is engaged to the wrong man. As time slips away from Dabney, she is determined to help those she loves most find love again, but at what cost to her own relationships? This sounds like it's going to be good. Not your average run-of-the-mill romance. I think it's going to be quite um, heartfelt, and I'm really excited to read this. And so now, let's go back to the final bit. Right, so we have been to lunch and... We are now going over to Forbidden Planet, as you can see across the road. And Sam is going to get herself lots of graphic novels and me and Katie are gonna go in a heap Relax. and sit on the floor because we've bought way too much stuff today. <laughs> and it's Sam's turn to shop. I've uh, outdone myself at Scoob, as you will see soon. And <laughs> Katie outdid herself when she was at Foils. And now it's Sam's turn, so we'll get back to you later. So this is what I got from Forbidden Planet. This is really exciting for me because Forbidden Planet has a wonderful science fiction and fantasy section. But whenever I go in there, I need a little bit of help. And I always want to ask for some advice from the booksellers, but I never really know what to ask for. Well, this time I knew exactly what to ask for. I went straight up to the lady and I said, please take me to some books that are like Rachel Back's Paradox series because I need a new one to replace that. And this woman very kindly helped me find a lot of books that I think are going to fit that. So let me show you now. This part could possibly be called the ugliest covers uh, section because unfortunately science fiction books aren't always very pretty, but that's okay, I don't mind. I get a kick out of these ugly covers. So first is a book that I found on my own before I managed to find the lady, and that is um, The Spirit Thief by Rachel Aaron, and that is Rachel Back's other name when she writes fantasy. So this is the first book in The Legends of Ellie Monpress, and somebody, one of you guys, um, mentioned on one of my videos where I was talking about how much I was loving the Paradox Trilogy, said I must try this if I liked this or, or mentioned it, so I'm really excited to try this, this is her fantasy. It sounds like, you know, magic, a bit of a thief, a bit of a cheeky chappy, a bit of a bounty on his head, it just sounds like a fun ride and if it's anything like her science fiction writing, I will be hooked. This was a book that was recommended from a, a few subscribers when I did, um, when I was talking about Fortune's Porn by Rachel Back. And also I watched a um, series review of this on um, Rachel from Kalinardi's uh, channel, which is brilliant. You should check her channel out. She is awesome. And um, again, not a great cover, but this is Cordelia's Honour by Lois McMaster Bujold and it is a bind up of the first two in this series which is another space opera type series which I can't wait and it's a massive series so if I like this I've got plenty to be going on with. This one I didn't know anything about um, but it's called Grim Space by Anne Aguire and um, I was told this has a really good female main character. I was looking for sort of a strong female character. Let me read you the back because um, I don't know enough about it to explain it to you so let me read you the back. Um, as the carrier of a rare gene, Jax has the ability to jump ships through grim space, a talent that cuts into her life expectancy but makes her a highly prized navigator for the corp. But when the ship she's navigating crash lands and she's accused of killing everyone on board, it's hard for Jax to defend herself. She has no memory of the crash. Imprisoned and subjected to a ruthless interrogation, Jax is on the verge of madness. Then a mysterious man breaks into her cell, offering her freedom for a price. March needs Jax to help his small band of rogue fighters break the corp monopoly on interstellar travel and establish a new breed of jumper. Jax is only good at one thing, grim space, and it will eventually kill her, so she might as well have some fun in the meantime. So this sounds like a bit of a rip-roaring adventure. 
I picked up this one on my own because I've seen a few people talk about it and it's called The Waking Engine by David Edison. Um, this one I believe is about when you die um, in this world, you move sort of up to different worlds every time you die. And the last city they come to is the City of Unspoken, which is where you sort of get the true death. But for some reason, people aren't getting this sort of true death or people are stuck in this world. And yeah, it just sounds really good. And I've heard some really uh, positive reviews on this one. Just two more to go. Um, I'm saving my really, really awful cover for last. Um, but this one is called On the Edge by Iona Andrews. And um, yeah, really brooding looking man there. Can you see him? Can you see him? He's very broody. Yeah, broody. This is about um, a girl that can sort of travel between these two worlds and magic and a bit of romance by the looks of things. Although, you know, it's not my type, but it must be hers. And um, yeah. It's just a, she recommended this if I liked um, Rachel back, so I'm going to give it a go. And then finally, the piece de resistance of um, but ugly co covers uh, is Within With the Lightnings by David Drake. Oh yeah, old school covers. The woman described this one to me as a bit of a space opera. There's lots of sort of adventuring going on, but it's about like a ship's captain who's a bit egotistical and his lower sort of underling who works under him actually figures everything out and always like does everything. But he's the one that always gets the praise, but she doesn't mind. And she's just sort of the snarky, um, snide uh, person behind all of their successes. And it just sounds like fun. And I sh the bookseller recommended it and I'm going to trust her and I'm going to give this a go as well. Although mm, might not take it out of the house because it's a bit embarrassing for the cover. So I had a really wonderful day. I'm home now. I'm in my pajamas. I've got Batman pajamas, <laughs> which um, are so comfortable and my feet are throbbing and I am ready to put my feet up and have a cup of tea and read my book for the rest of the evening and go and put all these books on my shelf and yeah it was a wonderful day I really enjoyed myself um, thank you Sam and Katie for joining me and for meet for the meetup it was really good fun and they're two great ladies so definitely check out their channels you probably already watch them anyway um, but it was really good fun and I really enjoyed it and I can't wait till the next time so anyway that was my sort of vlog slash haul slash everything chat so anyway that's it from me bye for now booktube